What's up, folks? I'm Coach Ty, back at you with another one. And today's topic, why are sprinters so muscular and long-distance runners so skinny? The answer might surprise you. Let's get into the research. First things first, we're going to debunk a very common misconception. Sprinting does not make you more muscular. I find a lot of people, you've, you've probably seen that meme. I'm going to see if I can find it. That meme where there's a, a sprinter next to a long distance runner and the sprinter's jacked out of his mind and the long distance runner looks like he hasn't eaten in quite some time. And people will assume that, oh, the, the sprinting has some type of property that either makes you more muscular or keeps you more muscular. And long distance running has some kind of property that uh, is catabolic, that eats away at muscle, that makes you skinny, that makes you look a certain way. That's not exactly what's going on. What's happening here is we're kind of putting the cart before the horse and we're looking at this issue the wrong direction. The reason number one why sprinters are more muscular is their genetics. So we talk a lot about, about oh my God, <laughs> it's early. We talk a lot about <laughs> Uh, fiber typing amongst people, fast twitch versus slow twitch muscle fibers. Now fast twitch muscle fibers expend energy very quickly, they fatigue very quickly. Slow twitch muscle fibers expend energy very slowly and they fatigue very slowly. So of course, an elite level, you know, D1 college, especially at the Olympic level, sprinter is going to have more fast twitch muscle fibers than the average person and vice versa. A uh, high level long distance runner, marathon runner, um, Olympic level long distance runner is going to have more slow twitch muscle fibers than the average person. But here's the kicker. Fast twitch muscle fibers have twice the potential for growth as slow twitch muscle fibers. And this is why I say we're putting the cart before the horse. It's not the sprinting that's making them more muscular. It's that they are predisposed toward being more muscular in the first place. The same thing that makes LeBron James able to jump out of the gym is the same thing that makes him very muscular even though he's not training for muscle growth. It's the same reason that Olympic level sprinters are usually so much more muscular. It is the same thing that makes them elite level sprinters also makes it easier to build muscle. And on the other side of things with long distance runners, the slow twitch muscle fibers, again, have half, 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 let's just say they don't have the same potential for muscle growth as their fast twitch brethren. So it is harder for a slow twitch dominant person to build muscle. It's just the case. If you had those same two, you know, we take an Olympic level sprinter and an Olympic level long distance runner and you get them when they're, let's say, 15 years old, and you have them do the exact same training program, same training program, they both get the same amount of sleep, and they both have the exact same diet, and you have them do that for 10 years, at the end of that 10-year period, the sprinter person is going to be far more muscular than the long-distance running person, even in the absence of any differences with their training, diet, and all the other variables that involve with muscle growth. Now reason number two, this might seem like a bit of a contradiction at first, but just hear me out. So they're training. Now, long distance runners typically are not lifting weights as part of their training. It's just usually not. Although I would argue they absolutely should because it would help improve their bone density, joint density, uh, will help prevent injuries, and long distance runners are very susceptible to injury because of the sheer amount of impact that their joints are taking. But regardless, long distance runners are typically not doing a whole lot of resistance training, and sprinters usually are. There's images of all the elite level sprinters that you might know, Tyson Gay, uh, of course Usain Bolt, lifting heavy weights. So in normal circumstances, the sprinters are lifting weights, which again, further contributes to their muscularity. Another example of this would be football players, especially at the wide receiver and running back position. These guys are essentially sprinters. They 
run uh, as fast as they possibly can for however long the distance might be on that given play. Play stops and then they rest. So they essentially run a sprint, rest, run a sprint, rest, so on and so forth. And if you look at running backs, they are typically jacked out of their mind. Same thing with many, not all, but many wide receivers. Reason number three, long distance running has an immense caloric requirement. The sheer amount of running that long distance runners are doing in their training means that they are burning an immense amount of calories over the course of a day or and especially a week, a month, a year, so on and so forth. And there's a concept called energy balance, which is basically energy in versus energy out. This is the key concept when it comes to losing body fat and building muscle or maintaining. The calories coming in need to exceed the amount of calories going out if you want to gain weight or build muscle, and vice versa if you're trying to lose weight uh, or lose body fat. For example, running a mile for a roughly 188 pound man will burn about 135 calories. And of course, long distance runners are running a whole lot more than just one mile. So if you add a multiplier to that, you can get a rough estimate on how many calories long distance runners are expending over the course of a training session and that training session, the training sessions over weeks, months, and years. This massive amount of energy expenditure would need to, in order to maintain a certain weight and level of muscularity and body fat, an elite level runner would need to consume a ton of calories. So if we use a different sport, for example, let's say swimming and Michael Phelps, you might have seen that famous picture of Michael Phelps sitting in front of a table with a massive amount of food, talking about consuming six and seven and 8,000 calories over the course of a day. This is because of the massive amount of calories that he is expending on a day in, day out basis, performing lap after lap after lap in the pool. So in order to keep his level of muscularity, and Michael Phelps is pretty muscular, he needs to consume tons upon tons upon tons of calories. So going back to our long distance runner context, these guys would need to consume likely that amount of calories in order to maintain a certain body weight and level of muscularity, which is, you know, unless like that food bill would be up there. I don't know how much money there is in long distance running. I'm gonna assume it's not a ton. So, I mean, and also being a lot heavier for a long distance runner is not necessarily desirable. Swimmers do need to be a little more explosive than a long distance runner would need to be. So the muscle would be more helpful in that context. But again, Long distance runners would need to, elite level long distance runners would need to consume six, seven, eight thousand calories in order to keep a certain level of muscularity. And doing that day in, day out is extremely difficult. So there you have it folks. That's three reasons why sprinters are so much more muscular than long distance runners. Again, it's not necessarily that the sprinting is making them more muscular but that they were built to be more muscular in the first place. I'm Coach Ty with Muscle Wiki. Thank you guys for listening and watching. As always, please like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what you wanna hear from me next, and I'll see you with the next one. Deuces. I know